of a culture steeped in corporate thraldom and rampant, mindless consumerism. The fuel of this engine has been Mountain Dew and Doritos, and tonight we will see whether or not you can eat your own medicine. This is really scary short. I can't hear whatever this is. Oh, for Christ's sake! Hello? Uh, I can't hear you in the video. I can't hear what you This is really foggy. Oh, this is a waste of my It took me 15 minutes to work on that video. Right, let's. I'll do it myself. I'll do everything myself. You are Philip Spencer. You are in an ironic. Shh. You are in an ironic death trap. As a punishment for creating a culture of rampant consumerism. You will be tested. The game will be afoot. What you are wearing is a waterproof device attached to a pump that will soon fill with delicious, albeit disgusting, Mountain Dew. Oh yes, the fuel of the so-called gamers you market towards. However, everyone deserves a second chance, Philip Spangler. Even you. I don't know anything. Do about you want to be here all night long? <laughs> Pay attention. Everyone deserves a Philip Chance. Second chance. Philip Chance. Everyone deserves a second chance. Philip Spangler, even you. Which is why there are rules to this game. You see, there's a key that will release the catch and remove the device from your head. But to get to it, you must walk barefoot through a sea of sharp, shredding Doritos. <laughs> ah. Is it? Is it a house? Oh! Oh, uh, don't, don't worry about the house you see over there. We've resolved that little plot hole. The neighbours have been more than taken care of. Yo, Shanice, you'll never believe what just happened. This British guy just showed up, left me a pound of weed and aliens colonial marines. My weekend is set. Hit me up. <laughs> I hate to sound corny, Mr. Spangler, but tonight we'll find out if when the chips are down, you will view what has to be done. <laughs> Live or die, and thank God for me. For Hello Moines, we're going to talk about fallacious horror tropes in games. What do I mean by this? I mean I'm going to rail on a bunch of stereotypical shit I keep seeing among the endless onslaught of horror games that developers think make for a creepy, atmospheric, memorable experience, but are routinely misunderstood and misused to the point of ruining even the most promising idea. If you're a horror game producer, you might be tempted to use some of these ideas yourself, but I'm here to say no! No, no, no! Stop right there and learn to avoid the golden sins of horror games. First of all, darkness does not automatically make shit scary. Now, darkness can be an element of fear, but there's a fine line between eerie shadows in which sinister entities can lurk and pitch blackness that makes it impossible to navigate and destroys tension by making gameplay mechanically frustrating. So don't make your games dark, 
just because you think that makes it scary. Silent Hill 2 is a dark damn game, but it wasn't so dark you couldn't fucking see anything. You were given a pretty damn adequate flashlight almost immediately, and even when it was off, you could at least make out where you were going. In that game, darkness was used as a tense trade-off. Harder to see, but harder for monsters to find you. It had a purpose. It was part of the game. It wasn't just a really fucking dark place for no reason, and when you needed light, you got adequate light. Which brings us to the next big sin, don't give a shitty fucking flashlight. I'm starting to wonder if developers of most recent horror games have ever actually used or seen a flashlight in real life. Contrary to what these games would have you believe, they don't create tiny pinholes of light that only illuminate a perfect circle two feet in front of your face. Don't believe me? Check this scientific experiment out. Okay. Here we are in a totally nondescript garage that I've got nothing to do with, okay. Pitch black, it's the middle of the night, no one can see a thing, but what's this? Oh look! Look, flashlight! Suddenly, can see the whole fucking place. That's because this is what a flashlight does. Can see everything. Fucking up, flashlight off. Can't see a thing. Look, pitch black. Flashlight on. I can show you the world. Flashlights are not tiny little pinpricks of light. The only pricks going on are the people that think that flashlights can't do this. Get it right. And here's another thing about flashlights. Batteries? they last more than 60 seconds. A good fucking battery powered flashlight will go for hours if not days. Stop with the rapidly draining battery power. It's not spooky to run around collecting batteries via rinky dink torch. It's just a hassle and hassles aren't scary. Our next grave error concerns attempts to make a game realistic by causing the player real life migraines. Do not kid yourself into believing that excessive head bobbing and motion blur makes a game more immersive and therefore scary. It's not even realistic. Our heads don't act like coked up bobbleheads when we walk, and any motion made by our skulls are automatically adjusted to by our eyes, because the human body is a fucking marvel of evolution. I've lost count of the amount of horror games that have tried to make me sick by jiggling the POV camera around or blurring everything. It's not convincing, it's biologically inaccurate, and it's a pain in the shitting penis. Moving on. Don't make me pick up keys to open locked doors. Not anymore. Once upon a time, that was a decent idea. Used in games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, key finding was a part of intricate puzzles and opened up a whole new area of gameplay. Nowadays, the hack horror dev gives us nothing but an endless stream of locked doors and single-use keys. It's become so hackneyed, it's pathetic. Games like My Bones and Pineview Drive have ruined keys for everybody. Removing puzzles entirely and churning out experiences that literally are nothing more than key collectathons. They don't make you solve puzzles to earn keys, they just put the key in one place, you go get it, unlock a door so you can find a new key to unlock a new cogging door. It's unbearable, and if I never see another key again, I'll die a happy man. A moderately happy man anyway. Speaking of collecting, don't make us pick up pieces of paper or books anymore. It's been done. You're not going to convince us you're the new Slender just because you copied Slender's entire cocking shtick. From the most blatant Slender clone to even higher profile games like Daylight, the desperately me too nature of making us wander around open spaces, finding randomly placed scraps of paper has managed to become an archaic and overplayed trope in just a few short years years. While we're on the subject of Slender, that game arguably helped to repopularise the idea of the Stalker, an unstoppable force that follows you and cannot be stopped, and god damn does it make Slender fucking annoying to play, as it does almost every modern game that has a Stalker in it. Familiarity breeds contempt, so if you overuse the appearances of a Stalker, that's all that happens, you get sick and tired of it, it just comes off like, like less of a, of a scary entity and more of a troll. When you're trying to solve a puzzle or find your way out of an area, the occasional appearance of an implacable foe can be terrifying. Done too much, it's just irritating as you're constantly interrupted and thrown off course. Games like Clock Tower and Resident Evil Nemesis, they didn't shove their stalkers down our damn throats, they were used with care. That's what makes them memorable. I want to 
be yelling, oh shit, as a doggedly determined monster makes an unexpected appearance, not be sighing, oh fuck off, as another Slenderman ripoff turns up for the billionth time to interrupt me like a goddamn jackass. I love the idea of being preyed upon in a terrifying game. It's what made Outlast such a fine experience, but too few games get why it works. They overuse the trope until their monster is as scary as a pantomime horse. Slender was fucking bollocks, let's be honest, because by the tenth time you've seen Mr. Slendy Man, he's about as effective at spooking you as a loaf of bread. I've spoken of asset flipping before, and it's sadly common in horror games where you buy monster models and environments from the Unity Asset Store and make a game out of them like a Lego builder. The tragic thing is, this kills horror gaming, because part of what makes horror great is unfamiliarity and original alien designs. I've lost count of the amount of times I've seen the same head with spider legs in an allegedly scary game, and as for this hospital on the store here, just... just don't. Everybody uses this goddamn Jesus kissing hospital in their horror game. So much for fear of the unknown. I've gotten to know this hospital so damn well I should ask it to fucking marry me. Jump scares? Okay. I actually like them when they're done right. Do not just throw jump scares at a player willy-nilly without adequate tension and build. Done right, a well-placed jump scare can be an incredible thing. Again, see how Outlast plays with and subverts expectations by giving us things that look like they should jump out at us, only to blindside us with something unexpected. Too many games now, a little more than jump scare after jump scare, flashing spooky faces and pathetically loud screams at the player, mostly so various YouTubers can shriek in scripted displays of childlike terror. It's old. It's done. If you're not gonna do a jump scare properly, don't fucking bother because you're helping to ruin what once was a damn fine way to get into an audience's head. And rounding us out, don't assume that an hour of nothing before anything happens is actually scary. Despair is a fine example of this. In fact, it commits so many of these golden sins with its shitty flashlight and requirement to adjust your own monitor's computer settings just to see a damn thing. But the worst thing it does is assault the player with absolutely fucking nothing. This is something I've noticed in a fair few games lately, where up to half an hour or more can go by with not a single thing occurring. Now I get the need for build, building up to something scary is crucial, but if you're not having any events occur, if you're just making us walk along dark corridors in silence, you're not actually building anything. Again, let's look at Silent Hill 2, the best horror game that's ever been made. It takes a while to get to a monster, yes, but before that, we have a monologue with a creepy narrative setup, an unnerving and paranoia-inducing walk through the woods that uses sound and camera angles to unsettle us. We meet an NPC, things happen, tension mounts, all before we see our first monster. The recent cropper devs don't seem to get this and think you just tread water, just play for time before you throw the jump scares in. No. Fuck off. If your game begins with a torturous trek through darkness and silence, you do not know horror, you have no business doing it, and you should fuck off. Oh, and one last quick rule. You'll never be as popular as Five Nights at Freddy's, so stop copying it, you bellends. I did not make that watertight. No. That's on me. That's on me. My bad. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's still trapped on your head, so... Yeah. If you want to go home, you still got to walk across the Doritos to them. I'm not, I'm not walking across the Doritos or anything, man. Well, you've got to, because we've all got to go home at some point. I want to catch up on the Doritos. So I'm sticking a plate and I... Well, you better walk across there for one of the Doritos then! But you... You do it. I'm not... No, no. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm Jinsaw. I don't walk through my own traps. I don't know what that means. Look, look, look. You're Philip Spangler! You've heard of the Jinsaw Killer! I will, I will pay you, like, 20 bucks to do it. 20 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, alright, I can do this. 20 bucks. I mean, I just wanted something nice for Halloween. I knew it wasn't Philip Spangler. He just...
Coach, I want to play a game. Yes, it's me, the billionaire playboy Cliff Blazinski, and I want to ask you a question. Did you think this was your game that you were in control here? Do you think you're responsible for any of this? Ask yourself, genius, who could have arranged for all this? Who has the connections to get you that many Doritos at such short notice? Who else could have a Mountain Dew guy? Oh yes, this shall do nicely. Who owns the very garage you're standing in right now? That CB is a charming man. Apparently, uh, anonymous black market dealers aren't so bad after all. It was me, Sterling. Cliff fucking Blazinski's son. And boy, we lost this game before you even started playing. You played right into my hands and now you're fucked up to where you're stranded between a sea of jagged, cheesy corn and freedom. Maybe, next time, you'll think a little harder before you get one of my games an 8 out of 10. If you ever get out, <laughs> For years they asked, what's the deal with the shrimp? And I pretended I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> it was just a low, random internet memes. <laughs> Is this means? <laughs> ah!